Good morning YouTube. Welcome back to Nutkin Farm. I'm starting this on the road outside my property leading up to the farm gate and uh, saying a quick hello to my neighbour's horses who have probably never been approached with a camera before and uh, are therefore not even slightly camera shy and uh, friendly horses they are too often see Mr. P the peacock hanging around here as well. Not quite sure why he likes this area. But I suppose it's pretty enough even for a bird. And um, just heading on to um, the farm gate. One thing you'll find in the Northern Rivers, just as a bit of trivia, is that a lot of farms, including mine, have funky mailboxes. They're made by... Uh, a local, I think, Austrian craftsman who's been doing them for years and they've become a bit of an institution in the area. They're all, they all have a common element, as in they're made from a nine kilogram gas cylinder with uh, lots of extra metalwork added. My one's a bee and my next door neighbour's got a dog. So there you go. And there's the entrance to Nutkin Farm itself. On the left hand side of the fence is why. I'm making this video today. Here's a sign that was there when I bought the farm nearly a year ago. Demeter Biodynamic Certified Produce Grown Here. And that sign is now out of date and you know, essentially invalid because I don't follow the biodynamic program. I did heavily investigate it when buying the farm because Buying a biodynamic certified farm is, is not something you throw away lightly. Getting that certification is extremely hard. Um, it takes at least three years of the farm having no artificial inputs or, or pesticides, um, fertilizers, that kind of thing. And uh, you go through this inconversion stage, you, you examined on techniques and everything else. Now, you may all be asking, what's biodynamic and how does that differ from other things like organic? Well, I can't go through all of it in a short video, but I'll give you the condensed version. Biodynamic is like um, organic and then some. They don't want you to use inputs from outside a farm if all, if at all possible they'd like you to use fertilizers manures even that you you have on your own farm which is easy enough if you have livestock i suppose and not very easy otherwise um organic of course has a lot of uh, certification requirements including you know no use of artificial chemicals no use of artificial pesticides there are some pesticides that you can use, although they don't unfortunately cover the whole range of what will uh, inflict macadamias. And the problem with that is that, you know, you really can't do no pest control. So when investigating buying a biodynamic certified farm, one of the things I did do was um, see the biodynamic representative actually came down from Queensland had a long meeting with me reviewed the certification I didn't have quite the data that he needed because it belonged to the previous farm owner but we went through it and I'd done some research and saw what is permitted and not permitted and I thought gosh you know maybe it is possible the agronomist who I sent in to look at the farm had gone around the farm with the previous owner and this was the, the sort of the season before I got it so it was in about March 2019 he went around the farm he saw the trees were basically healthy in the old blocks very unhealthy in the new blocks but he also noticed that there was no crop and you know he commented to the farmer or so I'm told but um, looks like the lace bug has eaten all your crop. Um, what do you do to spray for lace bug? And the farmer reacted in horror and said, oh, we don't spray here. 
to which the agronomist replied, well, do you want a crop or don't you? And uh, there was no crop. Now, coming up to the end of the 2020 season, um, thanks to a, a very competent agronomist and me spending the money to follow his recommendations, we've gone from zero crop to, well, the, the prediction was 15 to 20 tonnes, but we're already over 21 tonnes, and it's not quite the end of the season yet. And uh, so, you know, that, which is a, it's a decent turnaround. I'm happy with it, and the agronomist just rang me yesterday quite excitedly. The leaf tests have come back. They grind up leaves and check the nutrition levels in them to see what sort of nutrition's getting into the tree. The leaf tests are coming back op optimal within a single year, which is a, a lot quicker than I could have hoped for. Often you're looking at a three-year correction process. So the trees are, at, at least at the moment, they've got every reason to be happy and uh, ready for the next flowering season without any major uh, corrective work, except possibly soil acidity. But anyway, look, looking at the biodynamic process and what's involved in it, there's obviously two parts to any part of agriculture, or two major parts. One is fertilising, and the second is crop protection, which you know, usually consists of pest control. Now, as far as fertilising is concerned, the biodynamic farmer relies largely on what is already in the soil, and supplements the microbial activity on the farm with various sprays or solutions that they apply to the ground and um, the main one of them is called 500. I think it's to do with the number of million microbes or something in each uh, in each particular um, dose of it. Now I'm going to try and open this up. This box here contains the stuff used to make 500 and we get a bit funky here but bear with me 500 is made by taking dead cow's horns hollowing them out and filling them with cow manure and then burying them oh there's a big spider in there burying them in the middle of winter uh filled with manure you then dig them up in spring empty out the manure and by that stage the manure is apparently filled with incredible numbers of beneficial microbes and you don't get much obviously out of a single cow's horn it must, it's done manually and very painstakingly in a tradition and uh, we're talking here about a tradition invented in the 1920s by Rudolf Steiner the same guy who uh, made the Steiner education methods and uh, so he's not He's not dumb, but this was his version of agriculture. And so you mix this manure up in a centrifugal mixer like this for a number of hours, and it has to be done outdoors. You can't do it. You've got to do it under the moon or under the, under the natural sky, so you can't mix it up here. But this is the equipment used to mix it up in a great big vat. You then take it out of the vat, and put it in one of these sort of boom sprayer arrangements, which is over here. And you then put that on some tractor and drive around the farm and spray that on the ground. Now, you may well think that the uh, amount of manure applied per tree is something like a few grams a tree. I'd say it's probably even less than that. <laughs> However, the, the biodynamic method is not to feed manure to your trees, it's to feed microbes and then they generate humus in the soil and sort of everything else. Um, so I read the whole standard and read the theory and that sort of stuff and I thought, oh gosh, you know, What's it, uh, what's it been like in practice? Well, these trees were old in 2008 when biodynamic farming was first commenced on the property. Um, and they've survived it. I couldn't say they've thrived under it, particularly you know, by reference to the amount of crop that they had. But 
they've survived okay. The soil survived okay. Um, but there is, and there was, you know, when we tested, when we did the actual scientific testing on the soil after I took over, there was a real lack of organic matter in the soil um, and, you know, several deficiencies of key nutrients that you wouldn't ordinarily get. Um, obviously, the pest side of it was um, in ruins, basically. The previous farmer had used Pyganic, which is a pyrethrum-based insecticide, although that's now lost its organic certification for some reason. I don't know why. Um, it is otherwise an organic pesticide, but it's lost its certification and you'd have to be pulling your hair out if you were an organic macadamia farmer. Um, I suppose, look, all of this is leading to the question of can it work? I mean, I loved the idea of it and I certainly thought I could give it a go because you could get a higher price for for biodynamic or, or just organic macadamias. Marquee macadamias will give you about $1.50 a kilo more for a organic macadamias and they'll treat biodynamic macadamias the same way because they're organic and then some. If you want to do biodynamic and sell biodynamic you actually have to have a large operation because the processes here won't give you back your own nuts unless you've got a huge consignment to give them and treat separately. And if, they can, if you can manage that about 20 tons it is. If you can manage to give them about 20 tons at a time and then get them back, they'll give them back to you. You can sell them yourself and you can get what premium you want. But otherwise, being biodynamic doesn't get you any particular credit beyond just organic macadamia nuts. And $1.50 extra a kilo when you consider the crop losses you would get from the insect damage and um, general lack of nutrition in the trees, $1.50 wouldn't cut it. You'd need to at least double the price. Now I've noticed that there is one, I can find one biodynamic macadamia farm in Australia. They're in Queensland and there's a website where you can buy their nuts for, I think it's $15 for 250 grams, which works out at you know $60 a kilo. I don't see how they make money from that. Um, but it's, you know, if it's a large enough operation, they can do it. So my decision at the end of the day was you know, when I got the nutrition reports back and found them in such a parlous state, and particularly with the younger trees, which had, which had really you know, sort of suffered. And, uh, you know, I had trees that planted in 2008 that still looked like two-year-old trees, I thought, look, I've got to go back to conventional farming and um, the results this year have proved it. The trees look significantly healthier than when I took over. You can see some early flowering on a, on a couple of these trees. It's going to pick up a bit. But yeah, look, um, there's limits on, on any biodynamic or even organic farming and, and I, I definitely, like anyone else, appreciate the need to be as natural as possible. And with fertilisers, I've managed to keep that largely organic. But the, the underlying problem is, you know, you're looking here at something that is anything but natural. This is not how macadamias grow in the wild. There are not rows of trees and a clear undergrowth yeah, for macadamias in the wild and the ones that are in the wild don't crop the way we want them to. In agriculture, you know, it's a very, well, it's pretty looking down a row of trees. It's not a natural form of agriculture. So drawing the line on things like feeding and pesticides is a very artificial thing to do. You cannot have a completely natural farm and you might as well not kid yourself. Um, is, is biodynamic farming possible? Again, I think if you've got a big enough plantation and you use the right varieties, I'd say you almost need to look back to varieties like the 333, which have a very thick husk and shell and not much nut, to sort of try and bulletproof your crop as much as possible. Uh, because the newer varieties that are out now are obviously designed for you know, the agricultural practices that yet 99% of us 
use now, and that is, you know, to, to use some pesticides, to use, you know, a reasonable amount of food to generate flowering and crop. But uh, so long as you do those things, you know, it may be possible. On a farm like Nutkin Farm, the closest I can come is being, you know, as natural as I can with the feed and as soft as I can with the pesticides. So, yes, the biodynamic farming signs will be coming down. They don't fool me or anybody else, and I certainly don't sell my crop as biodynamic. So I'll have to find some other sign to put up, but maybe the, the sign that says Nutkin Farm is enough for me. Anyway, I've rambled on long enough for today. I've got some mowing to do. Lovely to talk to you again. And uh, the next video I do will be a year in review because I am at the end of July coming up to a year on Nutkin Farm. And I've got some things I want to say about how viable it is to farm as a sort of a lifestyle option. And I'm um, going to be referring back there to um, some other videos, including some done by my, my good friend Garth. Anyway, look forward to that, and I will see you then. Bye.